Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna go ahead and do this beautiful bridal makeup look. I already have my skin prep, so we're gonna go ahead and get into the makeup, and I hope you guys like it. Starting off with this Joa Crystal Glow Foundation. I think this looks beautiful, especially if you have dry skin. I think you're gonna like it. If you have oily skin, I would recommend a different one, more for a mattifying finish. I started using these two pencils from Moira. These are for color correcting, or at least that's what I'm using them for. I like to place them on areas where I know that I don't want to place a lot of foundation or concealer in areas where I know it's going to be hard to cover. Moving on with concealer, I'm going to use the LA Girl Pro Conceal and this flat brush to apply it. I think everybody should own a flat brush like this one. This is so good for patting, placing product, and also for cleaning up edges, which is definitely important if you want to elevate your looks. I wanted to shape the brow for this one to make it look even cleaner and after letting my concealer rest for a couple of seconds, minutes, I go ahead and blend it out. This is for a fuller coverage. To add more depth, I'm going to be using these two contour sticks from Fenty. I like to mix them together because one is a little bit too warm for me and the other one's too cool. So I warm them up on the back of my hand and I use this brush. This brush is beautiful. I actually love this one for foundation as well. Warm it up on the back of my hand and picking it up with the brush, I step it down. For contouring and bronzing, you gotta consider which parts of your face do you want to highlight. Which features do you want to emphasize? If you want to bring certain part of your face forward, you add highlighters, you add lighter colors and shimmer. And anything that you want to bring back or minimize, you use darker shades. For example, your contour shades or your bronzer. Moving on to the blush, I'm going to be using the Shiglon Liquid Blush in Risky Business. They have so many different shades and they blend so beautifully. I previously cleaned the brush that I used for bronzer so it wouldn't look muddy. And just look at that, that's so pretty. And I stipple it down as well, creating a sun-kissed look, but you don't have to. Then with my Beauty Blender, I just blend out the edges of that same blush. This is just so that it melts with the rest of the makeup, meaning the bronzer and the foundation. I think it creates a very seamless look and it just makes me so happy. To prep the eyes, I use a concealer, but if you have oily lids, I do recommend an eyeshadow primer. This will prevent from anything moving around and it will last you all night. This is also personal preference. I grab a little bit of loose powder, I like to fit me one, and I apply it to my lids. First removing the creases and then using a powder puff lightly pressing it on this is just to prevent the eyes from creasing these are going to be the brushes we're going to be working with and the eyeshadow palette a moment with you for moira cosmetics starting our transition shade with these two shades we're going to place them on the outer corner patting it down building the outer beam making sure the edges are well blended to have more control over the intensity of my eyeshadows i like to work in layers and I blend that out this is especially important when I'm doing my transition shade. You can easily create depth by using only one eyeshadow color by using layers. Now grabbing our darkest shade with a small dense brush, we'll tap off any excess product to remove the chances of fallout. We're going to start to build our darkest shade starting from the outer corner, working our way up creating that V shape just like we did before. And when working with hooded eyes, it's really important to bring the eyeshadow above the crease and also the shadow placement changes once your eye is open. So keep your eyes open as you're putting down the eyeshadow. Remember that your eye is not a flat surface. It has a curve, so it will look different once it's back to its normal shape, which is you looking forward. Going back to the transition eyeshadow, we're gonna continue working that on our lower lash line with this tapered brush and make sure to connect that to the rest of the eye, like that. Now to the fun part, we're going to be using our EM Cosmetics Dewy Eyeshadow in Moonrise. I think this is such a beautiful eyeshadow for bridal makeup, but first we're going to mix it with this eyeshadow converter. This is just to make it more liquidy and easier to apply when creating our cut crease. Making sure that this is above our natural crease, so that when we're looking up, it's still showing. And I like to stop mine right at the middle of my eye. And now you can fill it in. You can use a small applicator like mine. This is just to keep it from going above the line, but you can also use your finger. I also take that and put it on the inner corner and the lower lash line. I think this makes the eye look even brighter. Using our fluffy brush and our darkest shade, we want to work in layers again to diffuse that outer edge. Make sure that nothing is wet so that everything can blend seamlessly. Now we're going to grab these two shades and we're going to lightly tap on our lid. We don't want to deposit a whole layer. We just want some of those particles and shimmers. And we're going to extend that on the inner corner and also the lower lash line. This is to create more dimension within the shimmer. I like to mix these two because the shadow seal also makes it waterproof. But if you have a really good waterproof one, you don't need to do that. And you're going to need also a brush. I love this tiny angle brush. This is just so precise. For me, this is one of the easiest ways to create eyeliners that are 
precise and sharp. I fill it in from the bottom up and I stop right before my iris, tight lining the center of my eye. This is to avoid rounding the entire eye and defeating the purpose of the elongated wing. For the final touches, we're going to be using these two different size glitters and a small angle brush. And we're going to create a halo around the cut crease and alongside the eyeliner. Make sure to sharpen that edge every single time so that the delivery of the glitter is very precise and very centered. I love using different sizes of glitter because it maximizes the reflectivity, I guess that's the word, of your eye look. Um, we're going to use this one for Moira. This is a different size as well. In this one, we're just going to use it very lightly and then sporadically, just different areas, just to make sure that that chunky glitter has smaller glitter. And don't forget to do the inner corners as well. Look how pretty that looks. And for me, it's not full glam without rhinestones. So I'm going to be using these clear ones. Choose the tiniest. I see a lot of people using big rhinestones, but all you need are the tiny ones because they do reflect the light even better than the big ones. And we're going to place it in three different points. The top of your cut crease, the wing, and the inner corner. For the waterline, I like to use a nude color. I don't know why a lot of people choose white. I think that's only if your eyes are very, very bright and white. And that's not the case for me, so I choose a nude color. I also love using two mascaras. They're so easy to use and take off, and they do not smudge. Also, for your lower lashes, if they get too comfy, use a spoolie and brush them off. Also, you can brush them to the outer part of your eye just to add a little bit of a more dramatic pull effect. And to elevate your look, make sure to clean out your edges. This will also help sharpen your wing. Before we set the face, I'm going to apply the She Glam Liquid Highlighter with this Galados brush. If you have a lot of texture, highlighter might emphasize it, so be very careful on the placement. I decided to go in with these velour lashes in Can't Me Tame. These are some of my favorites, and I always get asked what I'm wearing when I'm wearing these. To set the face, I'm going to be using this contour palette from Koki. I love this palette because you have different shades of powder and you can mix and match them. When using the powder bronzer or contour, make sure that the areas where you're applying it is fully dried or lightly powdered. This is because these powders will cling to anything that's wet and that sometimes causes patchiness. For my nose, I'll be using this smaller brush and a more grayish tone just on the bottom of my nose to create an actual shadow. This will make my nose look lifted. And I had previously applied liquid highlighter, but I just love this one. This is from MOT Cosmetics, and I think it just gives a beautiful glow. Once again, if you have a lot of texture, be very wary where you place it. For the lips, I'm using Lucky Charm in a flush, and also the lip liner in Teddy from Ian Cosmetics, one of my favorites. You can mix the two colors on a palette, or you can apply them directly to your lips. Also, if you're using this for a special occasion, I do recommend the Vinyl Maybelline Super Stay Lipsticks. They have a beautiful finish and are transfer proof. And to finish the look, just grab that flat brush, a little bit of foundation, and polish those edges. I'm telling you, if you learn anything from this video, let it be that. Thank you so much for hanging out. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like this content. Let me know what you'd like to see next, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great day. Bye!